Hey guys, welcome back to the Mets franchise. Uh, sorry it's been a few days since I uploaded, but we are back in the month of July. So we're going to play a game, go to the All-Star break, and then play all the way to the trade deadline. And we'll stop there. I'll show you guys at the end what kind of trade targets I'm possibly thinking of and need your guys' help down below on what you think or who you think we should go after. So here we are right now, just starting off July, and we are 15 games up on Atlanta. So we are absolutely coasting to an NL East division title. Of course, we still want the one seed like we had last year. Definitely helps. We want that home field throughout. Uh, I don't think it's the most important thing in the world, but I, I would like to be you have that home field advantage just in case we go back to game six and seven like we did against San Diego last season and won game seven at home, of course. Senga on the mound, 4.26 ERA and 18 starts. It's not terrible. It's very mediocre, though. Uh, but he is our fifth starter. But Savali's not having a good year either. But we'll go over that all in the end. In the first, it's CJ Abrams. Chops one up the middle. That's a base hit past Jake Berger. Playing second today because we're going up against the lefty, who we'll show in a sec. Next batter is Juan Soto. Of course, he went back to the Nationals in this one. And he grounds one under the glove of Pete Alonso. Runner goes from first to third, as I don't think Tucker realized he was going to go to third. He got that in really nonchalantly, and C.J. Abrams takes advantage. So first and third one out, Robin Fortenberry, he pops up to third. Brett Beatty will make the play. So it's first and third, two out now for Washington as Glaber Torres steps to the plate. Having a nice season, batting 290, but a nice ghost fork from Senga strikes him out, and uh, Senga gets out of the jam unscathed. We're going up against Mackenzie Gore. Of course, he came over in the Juan Soto trade. And then for some reason in this one, he, Juan Soto decided to sign back with the Nationals. But okay, run around first. One out for Pete Alonso in the first. He grounds one slowly to third. They're not going to be able to turn two. So they'll just get the out at one. Run around second. Two out for Luis Robert. And the 2-1 count is smack to right field. The right fielder's going over. He puts his glove up, but he can't make the play. It goes by him and all the way to the wall. It's an RBI double for Luis Robert. It looked like that was Fortenberry out there in right. Looked like he had that one tracked down, but I guess he misjudged it. He's a little short king, too, so he probably thought, you know, he was taller than he was. But either way, that's an RBI double for Robert. And then Lindor flies out to center to Dylan Cruz to end the inning. We're jumping ahead to the third. Nobody on, one out for James Wood. And wow, what a moonshot from James Wood. Kyle Tucker just watches this one fly over the Mets bullpen. This game is tied at one in the top of the third. Fifth home run of the season for James Wood. So nice power there. Bottom half of the third, we do have a runner on second. It's Kyle Tucker. He hits one deep in the center field. Dylan Cruz going back. He's at the track. He's at the wall, but makes the catch right in front of the wall. Tagging was the runner on second. So the Mets have a runner on third with two outs for Pete Alonso. 2-2 two -two count, and he is frozen. Fastball. Low outside corner, absolute dot on the black from Mackenzie Gore. He gets out of a jam. Still 1-1 in the fourth. Glaber Torres hits one deep to left field. Brand Nimmo's running back there. He is running out of room. It's a home run to left field for Glaber Torres, the former Yank. Crushes one in New York, and that's his 10th home run of the season. So we saw his average up there close to 300, and now it's his 10th home run. So he's having a solid season. Bottom half of the fourth, though, Lindor hits one deep to center field. Cruz goes all the way back. It's outside of his reach, and it's a ground rule double. Next batter, Tasker Hernandez, hits one fairly deep in the center field. It's deep enough for Francisco Lindor to tag. He will not tag. He'll think better of it. Dylan Cruz with a nice throw in the third. So the runner's still on second with two outs for Jake Berger. That's a ground ball base hit through the hole. Lindor is going to test the arm of Juan Soto, and it's a wise decision. Juan Soto not really known for his arm, and that throw is up the line and not in time. Game's tied at two. Sang on the mound in the fifth, gets a strikeout right there of James Wood. That pitch count's getting close to the hundreds, so this would be his last inning if he can get out of this. C.J. Abrams strikes out in a high cutter, so he's one out away from getting through at least five, and he'll have to deal with Juan Soto, and he gets him to fly out to center. Luis Robert will be there to make the play. So five innings, two earned from Senga is uh, definitely not bad, but to only go through the fifth inning, you know, we could have more from our starter, but he was already at 100 pitches, just no point. In the sixth, we had a guy on, but Teoscar Hernandez grounds into a double play, so this game's moving along, still tied at two. 
in the top half of the seventh. It's Scott Barlow, who's not having a good year, and that not good year is going to continue. Kybert Ruiz hits one deep to right. Kyle Tucker goes back. He leaps, but he's way late, and that one's over the wall. Home run, solo shot for Kybert Ruiz, his eighth of the season, and the Nationals' third home run of the day gives them a 3-2 lead. So long ball killing us in this one. Scott Barlow was still pitching because our bullpen was kind of tired, and uh, it's James Woods again hits one. In the opposite field gap, that's going to be a two-out double. So Nationals have a guy on second with two outs for C.J. Abrams. Already has one hit this game, and Barlow would get him to line to right field. Base hit. Kyle Tucker comes up throwing. They're going to test his arm, and the throw's on the money, and the runner's out at home. So the Nationals only get one in the seventh. We've seen people test Kyle Tucker's arm before. It hasn't worked out, and it stays that way. Oh, Kurt was in the eighth. He works a nice eighth inning. Bottom half of the eighth now. We're running out of time here to come back in this one. It's Brandon Nimmo, though. He hits one deep in a right field. Fortenberry's going back. He looks up. It's gone. Game tying solo home run for Brandon Nimmo. And the Mets have tied it up at three in the eighth. So we're cutting it close. But Brandon Nimmo's 21st home run before the All Star break gives us or ties this game. Next up, Kyle Tucker in the right field. That's going to dunk in right in front of Fortenberry for a base hit. Fortenberry having a rough night out there. He's not been able to catch a lot of these. Next up, Pete Alonzo. 3-1 count, and Alonzo crushes one to left. Left fielder is not going to come close. Juan Soto just looks up and watches it fly as the Mets have the lead in the eighth inning. A big three-run eighth inning is going to cap off a comeback for the Mets as so that 3-2 lead for the Nationals quickly disappears, and it's 5-3 New York, and we're going to send Edwin Diaz on the bump. He's 23 of 27 now. I think he blew two saves in a row. If I, if I remember correctly, last episode, I think he was 23 of 25 when he came in against the Cubs and blew that one. So he's 23 of 27. Anyway, he gets the first out. Dylan Cruz to ground the short. Next up, Kybert Ruiz hit a home run earlier. He's going to fly to left. That's easy for Brandon Nimmo. So two away. Nationals down to the last out, but the Cubs are down to their last out in last episode, and uh, look what happened. They came back. Well, luckily, we won that game, but a strikeout ends the game as Edwin Diaz finally shuts the door as uh, the Mets come from behind and win it 5-3. to three. So some clutch home runs from Brandon Nimmo and Pete Alonso win us this game as we, are, as we continue to just cruise right along. And let's take a break. Let's see who made the all-star team for us. So starting off, we had one starting pitcher, Corbin Burns, 274 ERA. He joins Woodruff, Hunter Green, Brady Singer, who's on the Dodgers, and Sandy Alcantara as the starting pitchers for the National League. We uh, would have another pitcher. He just wouldn't be a starter. It would be Edwin Diaz, although I don't think it's really deserved, but... Nonetheless, he is one of the top closers in the game. I still trust him and everything. I just don't think he's having an all-star season. But Edwin Diaz is an all-star yet again. And if you look, Andres Munoz, the guy who didn't want to sign with us because he wanted to close games. Fair, fair, you know, whatever. Uh, he did make the all-star team. Not even having a great year, but good for him. He helped us win the World Series and then he made the all-star team. We got a couple guys in position players made it. Pete Alonso at first base, shoe in, starting at first, 291 with 25 bombs at the all-star break. Beautiful. Brandon Nimmo made the all-star team. He's been having a fantastic season, batting 281 with 21 homers. So good to see Brandon Nimmo there. Four left fielders made it. That's kind of crazy, but good for Brandon Nimmo. And last but not least, Kyle Tucker, who is also having a great season. Nimmo, Tucker, and Alonso have been a huge reason why we have so much success they have been all hitting not only for average but for pop as well got a couple trades around the league some odd ones as the Phillies are not really in it whatsoever but they're going to trade for Cabrian Hayes who's 89 overall with three years remaining on his deal so this could set them up for the future they give away two young guys with decent overall so you know Pirates get something back weird trade though because the Pirates got two big starting pitchers in free agency anyway the Phillies make another huge trade as they get Felix Batista who's in his last year but uh, they're going to trade Alex Kirilov who's not a huge loss and then a young guy who looks decent Keith Holder but why would they trade for Felix Batista when they're not really in it I mean let's see where they are in the standings real quick and this is the wild card because we know they have no shot at the division they're 46 and 55 
six and a half games back and they made two massive trades like that. It doesn't really make sense. The Cabrian Hayes one is kind of good because at least they'll have him for three more years. But the Felix Bautista in his final or two more years after this, Felix Bautista in his final year of his contract. It makes no sense to me, and they're not a threat to us in the division, so we're not worried. Anyway, we're going to go ahead against Toronto. They're having a pretty down season, and uh, but they have a, a decent roster. I don't I don't know what's been the downfall, but anyway, we're going against Jose Barrios in the first. Two out, nobody on for Kyle Tucker, and Kyle Tucker smashes one to right field. This one is gone, as he no doubts this one. All his no doubters seem to be right down the line, at least for a good chunk of them. And uh, that one is gone. Home run for Kyle Tucker as that is going to be number 26. So that's, I think it's the second after the All-Star break. If I remember correctly in that screenshot, I think he had 24. But yeah, Kyle Tucker with an absolute shot into the... I don't even know what you call that, but way up there. Logan Gilbert, 3.89. Remember last episode, last start? I think it was like in the 4.5. So he got... Or 4.8, I think. I don't know. I think he got that ERA down like a full point. So he's been solid. And he's going to pitch solid in this one. We'll get to him in a bit. Francisco Lindor in the second. Hits one deep. Right fielder looking up. It is off the very top of the wall. You can't get, you can't hit the wall much higher than that. And it's going to be a one-out double for Francisco Lindor. It's 19 double the season. He would get over to third for Tom Murphy. And Murphy is going to dunk one in the right. But this is not going to get down. So Lindor can't come around and score. It's still one nothing halfway through the second. Bottom half of the second. Uh, it's Logan Gilbert. And he is going to give up a base hit up the middle past the diving Francisco Lindor. So leadoff guy on for Toronto here in the second. Next batter, Zach Veen. They got him from Colorado. And he is going to hit one off the ankle of Logan Gilbert. Lindor bare hands, throws the first, but it's not in time. Logan Gilbert would be all right. Next batter, he is going to pop up to third. And Brett Beatty is going to take care of that in foul territory. So one out. We're double play away from getting out of this jam. It's uh, Blaine Krim, 1-2 count. He chops it to third, and speak of the devil, Brett Beatty, 5-4-3 double play as Logan Gilbert gets out of a jam in the second. He would settle down in the third, striking out Gio Urshela right there as he goes back to Toronto in this one. He was there for a little bit. Forgettable stint, but, you know, he was on there. Gary Sanchez on Toronto wearing number two, super weird, but he strikes out, and then Emmanuel Benilla. He goes down swinging as well. So Logan Gilbert bounces back, striking out the side in this one. We're going to the top of the fourth. Brett Beatty is with one out, and he hits one deep to right field, and this one's gone. No doubt about it. What a shot over the bullpen and into the seats. Well, not the seats, but the standing area. I, I don't know the term for it, but you guys get my point. 15th home run for Brett Beatty. It's been a while since he's hit a home run on video so good for him we're jumping all the way ahead to the seventh nothing has happened but Luis Robert finally puts the Mets on the board again as a laser beam line drive home run in the left field makes it four nothing Mets and uh, this one is four nothing here in the seventh so his 20th home run his average hasn't been there but hey he's shown some pop in his final year of his deal we're going all the way to the ninth inning six nothing at this point and that's a strikeout Logan Gilbert going for the complete game shutout he only has 103 pitches at this point. 2-2 count to Gary Sanchez. He gets him to pop up to first. Pete Alonso is there. And Logan Gilbert one out away from throwing a complete game shutout on against the Toronto Blue Jays. Emmanuel Benilla, he, what's he going to do? He chops one. Gilbert makes a nice play. Fires off his back foot. And it's a complete game shutout for Logan Gilbert. And as you'll see in a second, the Blue Jays only had two hits all game. Meaning the two batters that uh, got a hit earlier i think it was like what the second inning that we showed were the only two guys on base the whole game he had no walks he just had the two hits he faced only one above the minimum because we had a double play after that one after that first out so logan gilbert just hats off to him absolutely fantastic and now we're gonna jump ahead to the end of the month we're 70 and 41 now we already got 70 wins and we're versing the Astros, who are doing good this season. So this should be a little bit tougher of a game. Dustin May on the mound, having a nice little season. 3-4-9. He looks like he would be an Astro, you know. Got the orange hair and everything. This might be a tough one. And we got Urias going on the mound. He just keeps getting uh, better and better. You know, he's sticking around the low three ERAs. We like him now. We didn't like him. We didn't like him, but now we like him. Anyway, in the first, Jose Altuve. We like that. That's a strikeout and a beautifully placed slurve. 
So it's a leadoff strikeout. Next up, Henry Davis, former Brave in this one. And oh, we don't like that. That one is crushed off the high heat sign with Christopher Russo. And that ball is absolutely blasted. 105.3 off the bat. And Henry Davis, who was a former Brave in this save, we know that well because we played the Braves a couple of times, uh, goes deep. He would bounce back at TJ Friedel to strike out. And he would also get Miguel Sano swinging on a nice changeup. So he did strike out the side, but he did give up a bomb in the mean in, in the middle there. Uh, Pete Alonso to lead off the second. He hits one and finds a hole. It's a base hit through the infield. Lead off guy on for us as we try to answer back right away here in the top half of the second. Next up is Brett Beatty. He's already homered once this video, and he's going to do it again. No doubt about it. Absolute missile in a right center field. And Brett Beatty's starting to heat up at just the right time. As we haven't said his name much this season, it seems like he wasn't that impressive. But now, all of a sudden, just like that, he's got 18 home runs before the end of July. I think this is the very last day here. This is the exact trade deadline day. Anyway, sorry. It's still in the third. Brandon Nimmo hits a no-doubter. That one's headed over the bullpen. My goodness, what a shot from Nimmo. His hot season continues. 4-1 Mets all of a sudden as we put up four unanswered in this game. is 25th. Home run of the season. My goodness. As, uh, I meant 3-1. I don't know why I said 4-1. I think I was just looking at the board wrong. 3-1 anyway. Brett Beatty would strike out in the third. Finally get out of the jam. Henry Davis up again. Second and third. Uh, Brett Beatty thought about going home to get the out, but didn't want to risk it. Decided to just get the out instead. So it's 3-2. TJ Friedel, next batter. He grounds one through for base hit. They are going to test Brandon Nimmo's arm. And that is a smart idea because Brandon Nimmo cannot throw with that little rubber arm of his as that throw is off the line and the Astros have tied it and they're not done there Miguel Sano finds the gap he hits one off the wall runner from first is coming all the way around the three two counts so the runner was going anyway he's going to score easy and just like that the Astros have the lead right back so Julio Urias reverting back to his old ways as he's given up leads and he gets away with that pitch is that fastball right down the middle strikes out the batter and ends the inning so, just like that, we're trailing again, but in the fourth, it's Tasker Hernandez. He dunks one where the team is, where the defense isn't, so gets a base hit that way. One out base hit. Francisco Lindor up next. He'll try to continue his hot hitting. He hits one deep to right field. This is headed towards the gap. It is gone. It clears the wall and goes into the Astros' bullpen. And just like that, the Mets have the lead right back. We answer back yet again with a big home run. Francisco Lindor, number 16, gives us a 5-4 lead. Urias here, he is struggling in this one. He walks Altuve as we're only in the fifth, but I this, think this might be his last inning if he can even get out of it. He gets Henry Davis. Well, that was just a strike. Jose Altuve steals second, so the Astros got a, the tying run in second and nobody out. Let's see if Urias can bear down. He gets Davis to strike out on high fastball. So one away. TJ Friedel up next. He is going to get him to strike out high slur, but beautifully placed. From Urias, so he's one out away from getting out of it. 90, now his 100th pitch of the game is absolutely freezes Miguel Sano with a high changeup. And yeah, he, he couldn't do anything about that. High changeup, and Urias is pumped. He is pumped to get out of five with a possible win, even though he probably doesn't deserve it giving up those four runs. But anyway, Loisaga in for the sixth, and this one's off the wall. Nimmo tried to leap for that one, but no, it's going to be a leadoff double in the sixth for the Astros. Still 5-4 Mets, though. Yander Diaz with a nice shot off the wall. Next up, Gabriel Arias, and he's going to strike out in a beautiful slur from Loizaga. One out. Kyle Stowers up next. He chops one up the middle. It's a base hit. Runners rounding third, testing Luis Robert, and another guy who doesn't really throw out any guys. Luis Robert has the runner safe. Tie game just like that. 5-5. Loisaga would walk Jose Altuve with two outs to load the bases for Henry Davis, but he would get Davis. He can't hold up on that nasty slur. So we're end of six, and it is 5-5, five, five, anyone's ball game. Uh, we're going to jump ahead to the top of the seventh. Nobody on for Pete Alonso. That's going to be another missile base hit on the ground. My goodness, he's been hitting the ball hard, even when he doesn't hit a home run. Pete Alonso's having a fantastic season. Brett Beatty up next. He's already homered today. He's going to do it again. He's not, but he's going to find the gap. This one's headed all the way to the wall. Pete Alonso, not the fastest guy, but this ball is in the perfect spot. Alonso's going to round third. The throw home is just not in time. It was a good relay, but it was just sends the catcher a little bit to the right. And Pete Alonso scores. We have the lead back. Next batter, Luis Robert. That's up the middle. Base hit 
Brett Beatty's rounding third. He'll score easily. It's 7-5 as the Mets have now taken a two-run lead in the seventh. And uh, we're going to jump ahead to the ninth. It would end up being 9-5 in this one as Gregory Soto strikes out Arias. And the Mets win it again. We've yet again won all three games in the episode. We are just absolutely balling this season. The team we have built, even after winning the World Series, has it's been better than last year. It really has not been this easy in, in any franchise I've had. We've built such a juggernaut. And it would be a real shame if we didn't win the World Series and win back-to-back -back titles. As we are, I think we're at a point in the season, as you can see, end of July, trade deadline. We could start looking ahead. I think it's fair to say. I mean, I'll have our eyes on the prize. We'll get to the postseason before you know it. Let's look at the standings all around. Obviously, we're in the East. The Cardinals lead by only two games in the Central. So the Reds are right there with them uh, for the Central. In the NL West, the Diamondbacks are actually ten and a half games up on the Dodgers. So the Dodgers kind of fell down to earth. And Diamondbacks have kind of a commanding lead. Interesting. And in the wild card right now, Reds, Brewers, and Cubs, with the Dodgers technically tied on win percentage. The Braves somehow, even though under 500, only game and a half out. So the Braves aren't out of the playoffs just yet. And I've been saying that they keep having, I've, I've kept saying that they have a, a good roster in this. You see the worst teams in the league, Marlins, Rockies, Pirates, Nationals, and, and the Phillies in there, in there even after making all those trades. But the Pirates, Rockies, and Marlins really separate themselves from the rest. The Yanks still in first in the AL East, just barely half a game on the Rays and only one game on the Orioles. So that'll be an interesting watch to see who wins the AL East. All three good teams there. The Guardians are four and a half up on the Tigers and five on the Twins. So Tigers, Twins, Guardians, that's a decent little matchup there for the Central. And the West, too. Three teams within a game, Astros, Angels, and Rangers, all within a game of each other. So we've got some good... Good things going on in the American League. Very interesting. And the wild card is super tight as well. I mean, wow, look at those three teams. And then half game out of the Orioles, a game out, and a game and a half out for the Twins. And they're the worst team, White Sox, A's, and Royals. So speaking of that, we're going to look at some potential trade candidates. I say we either need a back of the bullpen guy or another starter who could start in the postseason because Aaron Savale is struggling. So Jordan Romano is one option last year on his contract. He's doing okay, not great. So I'm sure that Toronto would be happy to get like a, anything for him. Another guy, Garrett Crochet, a little bit younger, but he's also in the last year of his deal. He's actually pitching really well this season, 2.78. He's a lefty, can never have enough lefties in the bullpen, hard thrower. And again, on the last year of his contract, so I'm sure the White Sox will want to get something for him. Uh, we'll see. Uh, another guy we're looking at is Tanner Scott. He's having a pretty solid season. He's been having solid seasons. He's just been a solid reliever. Last couple of years, he's 32 years old, lefty. Now, the thing with this is he does have um, not just this year, but he has next year left on his contract as well, which is a plus for us, but also kind of a minus only because probably have to give up a little something better, like maybe a B, o, B potential prospect or something that could actually be something. So, you know, but that's still an option. I'm not afraid to give it up. I'm going for the World Series. And if we decide to go the starter route, there's I have, I think, two options there's Tanner Houck from Boston, who's having a decent season. Definitely better than Savali's 5 ERA. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. I don't think we can continue with Savali as our fourth starter. And I don't trust Senga enough to be our fourth starter. I mean, I, I do. I mean, we can. If, if if you think we just need a bullpen piece and we're good with Senga and Savali, then I'll listen to you guys. Uh, but if you think we need a starter, Tanner Houck, definitely an option. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year. And Boston's going nowhere. Another guy, uh, Luis Castillo. The Mariners are awful this season. Castillo's doing solid. They owe him a lot of money. We can give them a prospect or two and take on the rest of that big contract, which is which is only for the rest of the year, so it's not like it's that much. But still, it saves them from a little salary, and then he'll be a free agent as well, and they'll get something back for him. So I think that all makes sense, but let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think I should get a bullpen guy or a starter or both? Uh, you know, there's really no wrong answer. It's whatever you guys think, so... Let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to drop a like if you did. We'll be back in the next episode and with uh, with a trade or two, depending on what you guys want. And then uh, we're just going to pretty much be coasting to the playoffs. I think maybe uh, you know we'll have the World Series rematch against the Angels, which will be interesting. And then we're getting close to the end of the season, and it's close to playoff time. So we'll see you guys in a little bit, and uh, take care.
I'ma need safety. Tell her I can't snake me. Ray gun off safety. My girl so tasty. Tell her it's your world. She want the two-tone spaceship. Blow smoke screen daily. So the stress don't face me. I'm going. I keep it factual.